Hello everyone, welcome to the part 4 video of Form 4 Additional Maths, Chapter 5, Progressions. And in this video, we're going to look at some of the first n terms, which is denoted by the symbol Sn of geometric progressions. Actually, we've already seen this symbol before in the previous uh, arithmetic progressions. So what is the meaning of some of the first n terms? We look at this, the meaning again. Given a series of numbers or a geometric progression here, if you want to find the sum of the first 10 terms, which is denoted by S10, it means that we want to total out the values starting from the first term, which is 3, to the, plus the second term, 15, plus the third term, fourth term, fifth, sixth, seventh, until the tenth term. We want to total up all the values. That is the meaning of sum of the first 10 terms. So how are we going to find the total without finding all the values? We can use a formula and before we start, we need to learn how to derive the formula. Sn here equals the first term plus the second term, and we add up all the terms until the nth term. So if we use the formula that we've learned in the previous video here, where the nth term equals to ar to the power of n minus 1, we can change all the terms here, t1, t2, t3, all in this form, ar n minus 1 form. So we rewrite this, becomes this. The first term, t1 is a. The second term, ar2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 becomes 1, power of 1. ar, the third term will be 3 minus 1, you get 2, and so on. So the last term here, tn equals to ar n minus, to the power of n minus 1. This equation here, if we, we label this as equation number 1, if right now we multiply the first equation, equation 1, with r, means all the terms here, all these terms are multiplied by r, we'll get something like this, where sn becomes r sn, a becomes ar, ar times r becomes ar squared, ar squared times r becomes ar to the power of 3, ar to the power of n minus 1 becomes ar n, and r to the power of n. We label this as equation number 2. If we now take equation 1 minus equation 2, meaning that Sn minus Rsn, A minus the terms here, Ar minus Ar, you get 0. Ar squared minus Ar squared, you get 0. And so you can see the pattern here where this term and this term will cancel out. We cancel out this term, we cancel out, cancel out. This term and this term will cancel out. We have the term A and Ar to the power of n left. Here, hence, A minus Ar to the power of n. So we get something like this, Sn minus Rsn. Here, for this part here, we only have A minus A R to the power of N. Now we factorize Sn, we factorize A, we get this. If we want to find Sn, we move 1 minus R to the right-hand side, you get this. So this is the first formula, where to find the sum of the first N terms, we need the 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 value for the first term and the values for the common ratio. So what will happen if we take equation 2 minus equa equation 1 instead? Okay, the same thing applies, but now we take this term minus this. AR minus AR cancel out. AR squared minus cancel. AR squared cancel. Cancel, cancel, cancel. This one minus this cancel out. You have AR to the power of N minus A. So you get this, like, something like this. If we factorize Sn and A, you get this, and we move, when we move R minus 1 to the right hand side, we have this. So for this part, you have the first formula and the second formula. Okay, and notice that the first formula and the second formula, both R cannot be equals to 1. If R is equals to 1, 1 minus 1, you get 0. You cannot divide by 0, the answer is undefined. Hence, for geometric progression, R cannot be 1. And when do we use this equation and when do we use this equation? So usually we'll use this when the modulus of R is less than 1. For example, 0 0.5, 1 over 2, 1 over 3. When the R is 1 over 3, we use the first formula. When the R is bigger than 1, whether it's positive or negative uh, under the modulus, we will be using this formula. Now before we look at the examples, there is one more thing that we need to take note. That is, we can find the nth term by using the sum of the terms. How? 
So we try to derive this by first. Okay, we look at the example here. If we have S6 means we find a total of the first six terms. This is equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3 until T6. If now we want to find the sum of the first five terms, we have T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 until T5. If I want to find the sixth term, I can take the total minus this to get the sixth term. So T6 equals to S6 minus S5. Here you see S6 is this, S5 is this. So if this minus this, what is left is T6. So if you want to find a particular term, like for example the term, the sixth term, we take the sum of the first six term minus the sum of the first five term. The value of the term is one smaller than the six. So from here we can derive that if we want to find Tn, the nth term, it is equal to the sum of the first n term minus the sum of the first n minus one term. So let's take a look at all the examples for this part. Example number one. Find the sum of the first eight terms of the following geometric progression. So we know this is geometric progressions. So we're going to find the sum of the first eight terms. Means we are going to use this formula. We don't know whether uh, what is the value of R, so we so I just use this as a general. So to use this formula, we need to find the value of A. A is the first term, which is one. So to find the common ratio R, we take the second term over the first term. So it's three over one, you get three. Three is bigger than one. So we take we use this formula. Since we want to find the sum of the first eight terms, means n equals to eight. We substitute all these values into this formula. You get s the sum of the first eight terms. A is one, r is three. You use your calculator, calculate the values. You get the answers. Now we go to example number two. Evaluate the geometric series. So now this is given as a geometric series. Means the values here follows the pattern of a geometric progression. If we want to sum up all the values here, we need to use the formula for finding the sum. To use this formula, we need to find the value of A and R, the first term and the common ratio. So from here, the first term is 48. To find the common ratio, we take 12 over 48, which is 1 over 4. Notice that 1 over 4 is less than 1. Hence, we are not using this formula. We use the second one where, uh, where 1 minus r to the power of n. Okay, since the r has a value which is smaller than 1, we use this instead. And to use this formula, we also need to find the value of n. But we don't know the value of n. So we need to find the value of n first by using the last term here. Remember, when we want to find the term, we are using this formula. Okay, the nth term equals to this. So the last term here will tell us how many terms are there in this series. Since we already have A and R, we just substitute the values inside. Where Tn here will be the last term, which is 3 over 64. Then we simplify this by moving 48 here. 64 times 48, you get this. And then we simplify this part. And then if in order to find n, we can either use logarithm or in this case, since uh, 1, 2, 0, 4 can be written as this, okay, 1 over 4 to the power of 5, because 4 over 4 to the power of 5 is 1, 0, 2, 4, we just use a comparison straight away. 5 equals to n minus 1 and n equals to 6. Now we have all the values ready. We substitute into this formula. S6 equals to 48. 1 minus 1 over 4 to the power of 6. 1 minus 1 over 4. Hence, the final answer is 6, 5, 6, 0. Example number 3. The sum for, of the first n terms of the geometric progression for this geometric progression is this. Find the value of n. So, sum of the first n terms, of course, we are using this formula. Then, we need to find the value of a, which is the first term. And then, we need to find the value of the rate, common ratio by taking the 18 divided by 6. You get 3. And hence, we can find the n because Sn here is 6558. This is Sn. So we substitute the values into the formula. You get Sn here is 6558 because this is, the, this is the total of the first n terms. A is 6, R is 3, 
you uh, so now 3 minus 1 is 2 so we move 2 here because multiplies 2 6 you move here because divided by 6 you get this minus 1 you move here because plus 1 2 1 8 7 and now you can use a logarithm to solve this to find n or because uh, 2 1 8 7 is 3 to the power of 7 here since the base number is the same we can compare the ind indices we can compare the indices which is n equals to 7 so that's the answer given the geometric progression 1 over 4 2 16 and so on find the sum of the terms from the 7th term to the 10th term means this time we only want the sum from the 7th term t7 to the 10th term this means t7 plus t8 plus t9 plus t10 to find this first we look at the sum of the first 10 terms which is from t1 until t10 we only need to find the values from t7 to t10 so to find these values first we find the total which is s10 the total of first 10 terms we minus the first six term which is s6 so to find the answer for this example we need to take s10 minus s6 to get the sum of this part so to find the sum of this first we need to use the formula of the sum of the first 10 terms and of course we need to find the value of a from here a is 1 over 4 r is 2 over 1 over 4 so 2 divided by 1 over 4 you get 8 since the value of r is greater than 1 hence we are using this formula and now we try to find s10 minus s6 by substituting the formulas with the values so a is 1 over 4 r is 8 n is 10 for the first part here so r r minus 1 then here a is 1 over 4 r is 8 n is 6 to find the first six terms you calculate this you get the answer which is this example number five find the least terms of the geometric progression given here that have to be taken so that its sum exceeds 80 so the least term means the least the minimum amount of terms the number of n where the sum of the terms is more than 80 in other words it means finding sn where sn is greater exceeds means greater more than uh, 80 so first we find it we use this to find the value of n we find the smallest value of n available first we need to find the value of a which is 2 then r is 3 over 2 and then we substitute into this formula here you get this okay 2 r is 3 over 2 is greater than 1 that's why we are using this formula now we find this 3 over 2 minus 1 which is 1 over 2 you move this to the other side the 2 you move to the other side you calculate you are supposed to get this 20 negative 1 move to the other side you get 21 for this you have to use logarithm so you log, use log base 10 for both sides then you use the power law to bring n to the front next you bring this value here to the right hand side so it becomes log base 10 of 21 divided by log base 10 of 3 over 2 since log base 10 of 3 over 2 is a positive value when you move it to the right hand side there is no change to the direction of the symbol then we calculate the values you get this since we want to find the minimum value of n the least value of n minimum and it must be an integer so the the smallest integer which is greater than 7.5 is 8 hence n equals to 8 example number six the nth term tn of a progression is given by this express tn minus 1 in terms of n and then you need to show that the progression is a geometric progression so we settle the first part first express tn minus 1 so tn given is this to find tn minus 1 you just replace n with n minus 1 here so n here replaced with n minus 1 simplify this you get this okay now next part show that the progression is a geometric progression how we need to prove that the common ratio is a constant so how do you prove that we find the common ratio by using tn and tn minus 1 okay so the common ratio equals to tn over tn minus 1 we substitute the values inside here we try to simplify this so 2 to the power of n plus 3 actually equals to 2 to the power of n times or multiply 
or multiplies 2 to the power of 3. So this part is the same, 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of 2. 2 to the power of n and this cancel, you have this, simplify it, you get 2. So since this ratio has a constant value of 2, this shows that the progression is a geometric progression because it has a common ratio of 2. So whenever you want to prove that a progression is a geometric progression, you just have to prove the ratio is a constant number without any unknowns or variables. Last example, example 7. Find the third term of a geometric progression given the sum of first two terms is negative 2, the sum of a fourth first the sum of the first four terms is negative 10, where 2 to the power of, where r squared is not equals to 1. So we'll come back to this later. First, we look at the information given. We want to find the third term. Third term means T3. To find T3 first, we use the information here to help us to find A and R. So we are using this formula. Since we don't know what is the value of R, we just take this as a general one, where S2 here equals to this. So the N here becomes 2. So since S2 equals to negative 2, hence this equals to negative 2. We label this as equation number 1. Then we come to this, the second part, where S4 equals to this. And again, S4 equals to negative 10, hence this equals to negative 10. And we label this as equation number 2. Since we have two equations with two unknowns, we try to solve it. So if we take 2 over 1, if we take equation 2 divided by equation 1, means this divide by this, negative 10, divide by negative 2, we get this. Okay, so negative 10 over negative 2 is 5. So we try to simplify this part by changing the fraction form here, becomes this. Okay, this divide by this. Since division of fraction, we change the division to multiplication and switch the position of the denominator and numerator. Now from here, you can see that r minus 1 and r minus 1 cancel out each other. a and a cancel out, cancel out. Hence, we have this. From this and this, we have this. So how are we going to simplify this? Remember, we learned the identities before. a squared minus b squared equals to a minus b times a plus b. So we can change this to this form where it becomes r squared minus 1 times r squared plus 1. And this 2 cancel off, you get r squared plus 1 equals to 5, bring the 1 here, becomes r squared equals to 4, r equals to the square root of 4, which is plus minus 2. So now r has two values, it's either positive 2 or negative 2, hence we want to consider all the cases. So we have the first case when r is 2, the second case when r is negative 2. We need to substitute into equation 1 to find the value of a. So we substitute into equation 1 from the previous slide. So r becomes 2, r becomes 2 here. We simply we find the values here. Okay. So now we get a equals to negative 2 over 15. For the second part, since the value of r is different, yeah, we use the formula again. We substitute into 1, we find the value of a, which is 2 over 5. And since the question asks us to find the third term, we are using this pair of values here and this pair to find the third term respectively. Okay, so this pair of values, to find the third term, we use the formula here, where t n, uh, where n is 3. So t 3, a is 2, r is negative 2 over 15. Calculate the values, get this. When you have this pair of values, use the same formula, t 3 equals to negative 8 over 25. So you have two answers for the third term. So remember the question states that r squared cannot be 1. Why they want to state this is because for this part, if r squared can be 1, then this part will become a 0. Then the answer will be undefined. So this is the end of this part of the video. I'll see you in the next video where we look at the sum to infinity for a geometric progression and solving problems involving both arithmetic progression and geometric progression. Thank you everyone.